looks good in the middle of the time of day. So it be in the evening or at night. We want you to make, we want you to feel that you want to stay there for one night or even more. Now being the lead team designer for the culture team who makes all the towns in the game, our, our team is proud to present one more session and that is called original Final Fantasy stuff here as well. You can easily interact with the town folk like that on our table gondola. And compared to Venice, it has more vertical volume so you can enjoy a gondola ride looking down on the city like that. And the arts play a very important role in Odisha. Like for example, you can have your portraits drawn. This is another part of your, of your road trip adventure, right? With your friends. And what's being drawn there is very funny, but you have to play the game to find out. Speaking of art, yeah, we have that. I look at the next page. And just like I said, now, the world will look beautiful 24-7 the game as well, you will have to talk to the tavern or whatever to, to get quests. And there are some areas where you can only access with the gondola. Now that's the Coliseum. What's inside the Coliseum, I will explain another day. So, when you're not busy exploring the city, when you're not busy uh, enjoying the view, you fight enemies. So now I'm going to talk about the combat system. system is its high accessibility. Like I said, when I pass you the controller and you just look at the little guide in the right, that's it. You are able to put all the moves in the trailer and all the moves that you see here. Our intention is to make sure that whatever you do on the controller transitions immediately on the screen. And I think we have created a very intuitive system that enables you to pull off a very, very sexy moves, very fluid, very fast action in this open world environment. And you can pull off satisfying moves like this one. That was very satisfying to me. And high accessibility. People often mistake high accessibility with button mashing. Right, you cannot button mash in Final Fantasy you can, but it's not effective. Like for example, I'm button mashing right here. I'm spending too much time on one enemy while fighting bullets from the rest. So with just a bit of more input with the Emerald Snake, we can do this with the same weapon. This, this, and even this. They're all different input, and you can control that. So if you see a far off enemy, or you see a cooked up enemy, change your input based on the situation. And of course the war system, something that's unique to Final Fantasy XV. So it's very easy to walk, the walk offers a full new pain of strategies. Like for example, you can walk out of a pinch like this, and then walk back to an enemy that's hiding behind the wall. He is the wall. Right? So you have high accessibility, and you have total control of the situation. These two combinations allows you to come up with your own strategy and your own combat gameplay. And do not forget, you do not fight alone. You fight with your buddies. Here's a tip. So try to aim for the weak spot of the enemy. For example, the back of an enemy is usually the weak spot. So when you uh, strike the back of an enemy, you will deal more damage. However, if a friend is right near you, you will perform a joint attack. 
like this one. And there are many joint attacks in the game. What I love to do is, I usually walk out of the enemy, walk back to the enemy, and hopefully there's a friend nearby to do the joint attack. So, and you can also perform this explicitly as well. So we have the command system, so you can call Mark for Ignis. Ignis plants walk points on every enemy, and you can automatically just walk the eldest enemies and do a final strike at the end. So that was a satisfying move just now. So high control, high accessibility, work system, and with a bunch of friends with you, mix and match all this in your arsenal to defeat different enemies in different situations. The staple of Final Fantasy XV is magic. And we have created something very unique in Final Fantasy XV as well. Surrounding the area, sorry, scattered in the area are energy deposits, like this one. So we have just absorbed ice, and we're going to absorb lightning as well. So once you absorb all these uh, elements, you're able to mix and match all of them in this system called Magic Synthesis. Now, unlike a lot of alchemy systems out there, it is not a gambling system. You do not want to pray for high-level magic. It's part of the strategy. So you can actually see the result here. The cool thing is you can also mix with items as well. And you can actually see the result right away. So if I were to mix 50 fire and one potion, I'm going to get a spell that casts high-level fire but heals yourself as well in one cast. There are over 200 combinations in the game. A lot of them awesome, some of them weird, but you will have a blast with all of the combinations. <laughs> Let's use that magic on your first mid-boss, the Black Horn. Very nice to look at, muscle, sword, but it's a very tough enemy. Very unpredictable, it's like a raging bull. However, you have your magic with you. So again, one cast, fire, heal, boom. And fire actually affects the environment as well, it's burning the grass. He has also roasted the front half of the Blood Horn as well. See, it's black on the front half. And do not shy away from borrowing your friend's health. So for example, if you're in a pinch, just back away a bit, like that, and call Tempest. So what Tempest does is, it will suck the enemy with a little whirlwind, and then you can add your net at the end. And do not forget the warp system. Rocking enemies, or you don't rock enemies and you just walk in a straight line. For example, if you get to whack like this, then just walk away before you land on the ground. And then you can walk away on the tower to heal your HP and your MP. And you can also analyze the situation around you. And when you're ready, walk again. Also, try to aim for the back of the enemy. That's a weak point. So you will be able to, you know, execute joint attacks like this one. So we have here a battle scene where you have all your friends fighting with you, right? Our intention as game designers are, is to make this game look like a multiplayer game where you're fighting with your friends in real life, but it's actually just a single player game, right? So you have the work system, you have the command, you have all these joint attacks and simple input to vary your attack. The reason why you can do all this is because it is very, very accessible, easy to play, hard to master, philosophy of the combat system in Final Fantasy XV. How the combat system can be extended even further is called the Wait Mode. So welcome to hell, you have a lot of saber tasks around you, you're helpless, you're getting bitten, what to do? So we have received feedback from our trial version, episode last year, and this is our answer to feedback to those who can't follow the action. So just access your options menu and go to combat and choose wait. You can do this anytime in the game and voila, the wait mode. So what happens is, if I give you the controller, you can control, right? But if you like, go of the controller, it will go into wait mode. It pauses the game, but it doesn't pause it um, fully. 
you can actually rotate the camera and you can also change your target as well. So for example, I can choose my target for the, warp, for the warping very easily. There are many ways to use this waypoint. Here's another example. Let's try to find a group of enemies. Then you plant that as a target for Gladio to perform his tempest. So he will group up, put them up in a whirlwind, and bam. Okay. The same thing applies to magic as well. Again, so find a group of enemies. They're asking for it, five of them. Fire, bam, bam. Right? So these are just the many ways you can use the weight mode. I think it's very good for mainstream audience who can't follow the action, and even for hardcore RPG enthusiasts who prefer some tactical strategy in their game. You would really, really love the RPG, uh, the weight mode. And you can actually choose the parts of the enemy as well, like so, and bam, there goes the horns. Right, cool thing. There's a weight mode bar, as you can see at the bottom screen here. It will replenish only when the battle is over. So for bigger bosses, it's a bit tough because you know the battle is longer, so you will have to use the bar wisely. However, the weight mode is passive, it's very easy to use. If you are if you think that you can control the action, if you think you're comfortable, just move and just attack and it won't it won't execute. But if you just, if you kind of follow the action, if you're panicking, just let go of the controller and it will go into weight mode. So you do not need to explicitly call weight mode at all. Just let your controller be. And with that, you can be a strategist, you can be a tactician, and you can be a pro.